Another big crowd here tonight at the stadium. Welcome to the Carlin Lynch Activity Center. We're ready to go here from the stadium. That will go. Coach Lassie getting her team fired up. What a game. Nothing fancy, just end the game. Not returned, and the point goes to the Indians. It deflected in! Oh, what a save! The Indians get the point. What a slid hit. Goal! Did she score? Yes, she does! They may not catch him. Puts the Indians on the board. The Indians will win it. The crowd is going crazy. Uh, number five, Lily Mello. Number seven, Alexis Sylvain. Number nine, Kayla McGee. Number 10, Julia Karen. Number 18, Captain Callie Rose. Number 20, Aubrey Carberry. Number 98, Abigail Zariv. The Indians are coached by Beth Arguin. At this time, I would ask you to stand and remove your caps. We have a singing of a national anthem by senior Captain Callie Rose from the Dartmouth High School Indians. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave. Welcome to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium for this round of 16 matchup between the Longmeadow Lancers and the Dartmouth Indians. Dartmouth coming in 18-0 on the season. And the Lancers are 9-6-3, the 11th seeded Lancers 9-6-3, Dartmouth Indians the 6th seed in Division 2. So far <coughs> for Dartmouth, Coming off a big win against Bishop Stang, they won 6-0 last week. Looking to continue their march, continue their undefeated season. The Longmeadow, Longmeadow Lancers are the Division II defending champs, a, pro, a program that has, had, has made eight championship appearances and had plenty of success. So despite their record, they're more than formidable opponent. Coach Kelly Gallo, in her first season with the Lancers, she took over for head coach Annis Simons who had gone 42 years as their head coach. And she retired after winning the state championship last season. For Dartmouth, Coach Beth Arguin, with the program since 1996. Hoping just to keep, the, keep their undefeated season going. The Indians have not allowed a goal since October 13th. They've gone six straight, they, they have six straight shutouts. So they're, they're looking at, they've, they, and they're, at, they're actually a really good scoring team as well. I mean, they've scored, they score over five goals a game, but like any good team, they rely heavily on their defense, especially this time of year where all the teams are good. Defense is even more important. So for the Lancers, 
Mary Ellie Mohica Carpenter gets the game started. And we're underway. Lily Mello breaking, breaking it up. Stays Lancer's ball. Carpenter with some space, weaving through traffic. She gets off a shot just wide. Good shot by Carpenter. Same, some, some, similar occurrence in the last game for Dartmouth. They sh off the face, off the jump, they they started a little slow, but then they were able to establish themselves. Hopefully, they settle in after long meadow with a, with a, with a, their first opportunity of the game. Carpenter with a steal. Dartmouth trying to get it out. It'll be Dartmouth ball. Dartmouth this season scored, scoring 95 goals as a team and only allowing four. So, I mean, if that doesn't give you a clear picture of the dominance, they're not just an 18-0 team that just got lucky. They've really dominated their way through their schedule so far this season. When I mentioned some of the, the stats to Coach Beth Arguin last week, she wanted no part of it. She said she didn't want to jinx anything. That they were a great bunch. 12 seniors for the Indians. Dartmouth with the ball, Haskell will look to bring it up field. Zuber taking it along the sideline. Giving it down to Sydney Almeida and Samantha Souza. Sydney Almeida with the ball, trying to weave through traffic, good defense by the Lancers. Molly Henson bringing it down with some space. Oh, collision there. He'll stay Lancer's ball. Nice job by Henson. She saw the space and she was trying to find somebody upfield. No one was there. They're going to work it back. Matresco with the ball. Trying to shield off Haskell. She gets the shot on net. Great defense for the Indians. Sydney Almeida with plenty of space along the sideline. Great job trying to get by the defender, but runs out of runs out of room. Lancers ball. Mia Santiago loses the ball to Haskell. Haskell spins around, gets it downfield. Zuber puts it back in the offensive zone. Claire Campbell can't clear it. Nora Din along the sideline. Dartmouth with 12 seniors on the team. So you an important game for this senior class as they look to finish the, an undefeated season. Samantha Souza trying to break it up. She causes the turnover. Callie Rose loses it along this, the far sideline. The Lancers, on the other hand, lost 12 seniors last last year. So this is was supposed to be a rebuilding year, but they're still a highly competitive team with only three seniors on the roster. Dartmouth clears it out of the defensive end. Callie Rose bringing it up the field with plenty of space. She's got Souza and Almeida on her wings. Souza's got Almeida. She finds, she, she goes to Almeida. They can't connect. Almeida trying to make something happen. Lancers. Some good deke. Zuber keeps it alive on, in the offensive end. Almeida along, along the end line. Trying to center it. 
Good defense by the Lancers. And it'll be Lancers ball. Dartmouth keeping it in their zone. Almeida loses her footing and is tripped. Haskell with the ball. Haskell had two goals in the last game against Stang. Sydney Almeida had three. Great fall day here at Memorial Stadium. I'm Chad Amaral calling the game for Dartmouth Community Media. Just under 60 degrees. And Dartmouth has their first corner of the game. Samantha Souza will take the corner for the Indians. She'll be looking more than likely for Haskell. Haskell leaves it. Mello with the shots, and it's blocked by, by the Lancer defender. It's going to stay Dartmouth ball. Haskell. The pass to Aubrey Carberry. And she goes with a centering pass. I'm talking with Coach Kelly Gallo before the game. She said this is a really strong Long Meadow defense. The offense has gotten better, especially as of late, but defense has kind of been their calling card all year. It's her first season, as I said, as, as the coach of the Lancers. She's got this young team playing really well. A chance for the Indians. Almeida in front. Great defense by the Lancers. Dartmouth trying to find a, a window to get that shot, shot through, but there was nothing there. Ava George trying to keep it in the zone. Lancers taking it down the field, and they have numbers. Molly Henson. She gets the pass to Gothier. To Carpenter. Carpenter with a shot, and it's saved. Quick counterattack here by the Lancers. Dartmouth had it in their end, and... Dartmouth finally clears the zone. Samantha Souza getting that. Getting the ball out of danger. It was in front, right in front of the net. Dartmouth ball and the infraction. And we have just over seven minutes to go in the first quarter and no score. The winner of this game will play the win will, will advance to the lead eight and play the winner of Somerset, Berkeley, and Oliver Ames. Lancers with the ball. Looking to set something up. But Dartmouth pressing on trying to make something happen. And there's Sydney Almeida with the steal. Molly Henson along the sideline. Tries to get it by Ava George, but it goes out of bounds. As, I've, as I said earlier, Dartmouth has not allowed a single goal in the last six games. So just, they're... This, this could be expected expect to see a defensive game, so any mistake here could be costly. With both teams being stingy on defense, Dartmouth only allowing four all season. Five thirty left in the first, still no score. So far, the Lancers had the best opportunity with a, sh with a chance in front by Mohika Carpenter. But for the most part, it's been a stalemate, both teams. Doing a great job defensively, frustrating each other. Kelly Rose along the sideline, it goes out of bounds. Dartmouth ball, Aubrey Carberry, the ball for the Indians. Carberry hits it off of Carpenter. 
She tries to center it in front, but it goes out of bounds. It'll be Lancer's ball. Emily Brace gets it in for the Lancers. Dartmouth now with the ball. Haskell loses it in the middle. Tresca gets it downfield. It's Gothier. Gothier trying to find something in the middle of the field. Dartmouth defense. Great job getting back. Eight minutes into the game, Dartmouth doesn't have a shot on net, and Lancers have one so far. Carpenter centering it. Zuber with a collision. Kato Tool centers it. Great save by Zareev. We have another shot. Dartmouth struggling to get the ball out of the offensive end. Zareev with a great save, especially with all that traffic there in front. Dartmouth gets the call. It's going the other way. Let's see that save again. That was a great pass by Henson. Zareev with one save and then saves it again right here. Great save by, by Zareev. That was, as we said, in a, goal, in a game with two great defensive teams, every, every goal is going to be a big deal. It'll be interesting to see in Dartmouth. They haven't faced a ton of adversity, especially as of late. So how they react, especially in the early minutes of this game, will be crucial. Longmeadow not, not making it easy on them. Longmeadow working it back, getting it. Set, set, set in, scanning the field. Keto Tool finds Molly Henson. This is a far drive for the Longmeadow fans, and they still have a, they have a good crowd here. A lot of fans in the stands, especially now as we get later in the tournament. Every game means a little more. Long Meadow fans traveling 88 miles to get to Dartmouth. Even for a four o'clock game, I'm sure parents getting out of work early. This is a big deal. And for Dartmouth, their second straight home game, trying to move to 19-0. Each team four wins away from a state championship. For Long Meadow, that would be back to back. For Dartmouth, it would be their first recently. And we have a steal, Lily Mello in the middle of, middle of the field. Just over a minute, just under a minute to go in the first. Lily Mello trying to get that ball. In the offensive zone, nice pass by Samantha Souza to Callie Rose. Thirty, just over thirty seconds to go. Dartmouth trying to get on the scoreboard. Dartmouth had a quiet first quarter against Stang in their last game and kind of came out and took control in the second and third and ended up winning that game 6 nothing. Carberry along the sideline. And that's the end of the first quarter. 
Dartmouth zero, Longmeadow zero. And we'll have more for you coming up with second quarter action in just a minute. The competition, the sacrifice, and team unity are the cornerstones of life for each and every one of us here. Never in my wildest dreams, and when you're on chemo, you do have wild dreams, did I ever think I would be inducted into this Hall of Fame. My Dartmouth High School athletic days are some of my fondest memories. I wish all of you in one day of your life could feel what this feels like. To do something you love for years, and to be honored like this. A Hall of Fame is something that it is a great accolade. It's something that, you know, we've all walked into that, that front, front area at Dominic High School and seen those pictures on the wall. It's such an honor to be able to have my face on there. Dartmouth Pride is more of, you know, wearing green, wearing Dartmouth across your chest, being part of a team, being part of a family, uh, and basically just the spirit of it, you know, having the Dartmouth Pride to get you through those four years. So much more than just these stats and these wins and these titles, it's, it's this, this passion, this contagious feeling of Dartmouth athletics. And it's a legacy, it has so much heritage and it's, it's passed on year after year because of people who are here tonight, because of the coaches and all that they do. Your team of state champions, the Dartmouth High School champions of Division Three. Wow. Oh, this team has been wonderful. Touchdown, Jordan Tyman from 60 yards out. You're going to get knocked down, you're going to get hit, you're going to have a little pain, a little uh, aggravation, and you got to understand that uh, you've got to get back in the game. And I think that's life. We all get knocked down in life, and you got to get back and play the game. And we're back at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium for second quarter action. S after one quarter, zero, zero. Dartmouth, no, re no great off offensive opportunities in the first quarter. Lancers had two or three shots on net, but Sarif was up to the challenge. She, I don't think Zarif had a single shot on her in the staying game, so she's definitely working a lot harder already today. Lancers taking it up the field. Dartmouth pressing, trying to make something happen in the midfield. Zuber. A little contact there. It'll stay Lancers ball. Lily Mello trying, trying to shield, shield off Carpenter, but it'll stay Lancer's ball. Lancer's work it back. Carpenter with the ball. Dartmouth clears it out. Nice job by Julia Karen getting that ball out of, out of the de defensive offensive zone. Zuber trying to get it downfield, but Matreska there to there to make the block. Nice job by Molly Henson trying to get it to Mohika Carpenter in front. We're gonna have our first corner of the game for the Lancers. So two minutes into the f second quarter, Lancers with their first op first opportunity right here to get on the scoreboard. Yeah. 
Carpenter with the ball in front. Zuber calls for the contact. And they'll stay Lancer's ball. Emily Brace passes it in. She gets it back along the end line. Centering pass. Just couldn't find a stick, but it was a great, great centering pass. Worked its way through traffic, but no one was there to put it in the net. Lancers continuing to apply pressure on the Indians. Haskell looking to clear it out of the zone. Carpenter weaving her way through the Dartmouth defense. Haskell pestering, pestering her, trying to poke, poke the ball away. Haskell with a stop. Clears it out of the, out of the zone. Longmeadow in their first game beat Duxbury 5-1 to one to advance to today's game against the Indians. So they are capable of scoring some goals. They scored 44 goals on the season, allowing 15. Like I said earlier, this Lancers team, young team, coming off a state championship, only three seniors on the entire, on the entire team. Coach Kelly Gallo has them playing very, very well, as you can see today. They're going against a much more veteran Dartmouth team and hold, more than holding their own. Along the sideline, great pass, just gets by Haskell. Lancers are on the run right now. Carpenter, it's broken up, but it'll, it'll stay Dartmouth ball. Lily Mello gets it out. Lancer's doing a great job in the midfield. Every time Dartmouth's trying to clear the ball, Lancer's midfield right there to keep it in the zone. Just over 10 minutes to play in the second quarter. Lance is still controlling the game at this to this point. Great job by Samantha Souza clearing it, spinning around, and getting it out of the zone. But again, Longmeadow gets it right back in there. Eva George and Haskell trying to get the ball out. The way Longmeadow's playing is forcing Haskell to play a lot more defense than I'm used to seeing her. She's having to stay in her zone almost exclusively in the defensive end. Great job, Sydney Almeida. Can't get, can't get it by the midfield. Kate O'Toole had it. Caitlin Zuber trying to take it the other way. Lily Mello forces Carpenter to inside. Haskell clears it into the Dartmouth bench. Right to her coach, Beth Arguin. Beth Arguin with the program since 1996. I, although she doesn't want to reflect on this team with plenty, plenty of games to go, hopefully for, for, for this, this group, she did say that this was a really special team to her. I'm sure at this point, nothing's going to change that. They've had a great season. 18-0. Graduating 12 seniors are the Indians. Sydney Almeida looking to keep it into the zone, but Lancers have a back head in the other direction. Out of bounds on the Lancers. By the Lancers, Dartmouth ball. Deflected into the Lancers' zones. 
seems as if every time Dartmouth tries to get a little momentum going in the offensive direction, the Lancers are there to squash it. Dartmouth still with not a single shot on net. We're almost halfway through the second quarter. Lancers with the ball, Matreska trying to find somebody in the middle. That ball worked its way in just wide. Zareev with a save. No one was able to corral it and get, and get a def deflected in the net. Great job by Zareev getting in good position. Haskell looking to get it out. Again, it's, hit, it's, just, it's like they're hitting into a wall. Great job by Matreska blocking that, keeping it in the offensive zone. Mia Santiago, looking for one of her teammates. No one there, Ava George. Hits it out of bounds for the Indians. He'll stay Lancer ball. Sydney Almeida. Can't corral it. Nice job by Kato Tool keeping it in the zone for the Lancers. Zuber hits it along the sideline. Nice job by Sydney Almeida. St st sticking with it. She just tries to spin inside, but two defenders there. Nowhere to go. Sydney Almeida with two three goals in the last game and I think all three were off of rebounds. She did a great job of staying in front of the net and stuffing in the rebounds. Haskell bringing it up the field. Haskell with the shot. Save. And Dartmouth with their first threat of the day. Great shot by Haskell. Haskell with some open space for the first time, and she puts it right on net. Indians keep it in the zone. Zuber with a chance in front. Backhand. Sydney Almeida for the goal. Dartmouth is on the board. Dartmouth scores first. one nothing Indians. So it's not the amount of chances you get. It's the, uh, making the most of each opportunity. And, Dart and Dartmouth scores on their first chance, their second chance of the game. As I was just saying earlier, Sydney Almeida did a great job last game. Putting in rebounds. She gets the opportunity here. Zuber with the shot. It's kept in by Callie Rose. And Sydney Almeida puts it in the back of the net. Great goal. So the Indians take the 1-0 lead. It has to be a great feeling for the Indians. Have not played their best so far. But to get on the board first after having to deal with a lot of opportunities for the Lancers. Great job by Sydney Almeida and Cal great job by Callie Rose tipping it in over there. So give Almeida the chance to put it in for the goal. And a shot on net. Carpenter. The Lancers looking to respond right away. Great, great Indians trying to get this ball out of the zone. Nice block by Samantha Souza and she gets it downfield. Another block for Samantha Souza. Samantha Souza, she's she's jumping right in front of right in front of it. Dartmouth trying to get it down the field. Four minutes left in the second quarter. Dartmouth with a one nothing lead. Aubrey along the sideline, trying to find, trying to create a little space. Great job splitting the defense. Centers the ball, but deflects off a of Lancer defender and it'll stay Indians ball. We have our second corner of the game for the Indians. The Indians, over the last three minutes, looking to finally settle down on offense. We had a Grace Haskell shot, and then their second, almost right away down the field again, and the first goal of the game. 
Centering pass by Aubrey. Zuber looking to backhand it. She can't get it through the defense. Julia Karen looking to keep it in the offensive zone. Great job by Kayla McGee. Samantha Souza with a pass in front. That stick looked to be a little high. Lancer's going in the other direction. Nice job by Zuber, keeping it in front. Samantha Souza, back to Zuber. Backhand to Zuber, I mean Souza, Souza. Nice defense there by the Lancers. Julia Karen keeping it in the offensive zone. We've seen the Dartmouth defense pull, pull forward, trying to keep the ball in the zone. But now it gives the Lancers an opportunity for a counterattack in numbers. Good job by Dartmouth get, getting it out. Dartmouth being a little more aggressive. Just could try to create some more offense. But when you do that, you leave yourself exposed to a, good, a quick counterattack. Two minutes left in the half. Dartmouth with a 1 0 lead. Great fall day, sun coming down here at the, at the stadium. A little chill just above but overall 58 degrees, can't complain for November. Dartmouth hoping to keep their season going as it gets a little colder here in New England. But if you're playing field hockey in the cold, it's usually a good sign. Fifth, just under a minute to go. Dartmouth one, Lancers zero. Longmeadow Lancers with the ball. Matreska trying to get the Lancers going offensively. Great steal by Zuber. She spins around, tries to create a spa create space. Dartmouth will keep the ball. Zuber looking at Almeida. Souza goes off her stick and out of bounds. Final 10 seconds to go. Dartmouth. Overall can be ex happy with the way the, they, they played, especially in the second half of the first quor second quarter. It wasn't the start they hoped for, but in the end, they're the ones walking, walking away at halftime with a one nothing lead. So we're at halftime here at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Dartmouth 1, Longmeadow 0. We'll have much more for you here in the second half from Memorial Stadium. The town has a new communication survey that everyone in the community is encouraged to fill out, so that way we know how to get the word out about the issues you care most about. The survey asks how you prefer to receive information, where you currently get town news and information, what topics you care most about, how functional the town website is, and the convenience of public meeting times and locations. We want to know how the town can improve and what it's doing well communication-wise. The survey is available at engagedartmouth.org slash how do you communicate. Thanks for filling it out.
repetition, the sacrifice, and team unity are the cornerstones of life for each and every one of us here. Never in my wildest dreams, and when you're on chemo, you do have wild dreams, did I ever think I would be inducted into this Hall of Fame. My Dartmouth High School athletic days are some of my fondest memories. I wish all of you in one day of your life could feel what this feels like. To do something you love for years and to be honored like this. A Hall of Fame is something that it is a great accolade. It's something that, you know, we've all walked into that, that front, front area at Dominic High School and seen those pictures on the wall. It's such an honor to be able to have my face on there. Dartmouth Pride is more of, you know, wearing green, wearing Dartmouth across your chest, being part of a team, being part of a family. And basically just the spirit of it, you know, having the Dartmouth pride to get you through those four years. So much more than just these stats and these wins and these titles. It's it's this this passion, this contagious feeling of Dartmouth athletics. And it's a legacy, it has so much heritage and it's it's passed on year after year because of people who are here tonight, because of the coaches and all that they do. Your team are state champions, the Dartmouth High School. Champions of Division Three. Wow. Oh, this team has been wonderful. Touchdown, Jordan Tidman from 60 yards out. You're going to get knocked down, you're going to get hit, you're going to have a little pain, a little uh, aggravation, and you got to understand that uh, you've got to get back in the game. And I think that's life. We all get knocked down in life, and you got to get back and play the game of life and play it hard with a great deal of uh, enthusiasm. And I think that's where I, uh, I hope that they'd always do that. Welcome back to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. We have a one nothing game. Dartmouth one, Long Meadow Lancers zero through two quarters. A, a spot in the Elite Eight at, on the line here in the second half. Dartmouth starting with the ball at midfield. Neither team really dominating, but both. I would say first quarter went, went to the long metal. They, although they weren't able to score, they did control m ball, the ball in the offensive zone most of the first quarter. Dartmouth got on the board first, though, owning the second half of the, of the second quarter. Long metal taking it along the sideline. Great job by Aubrey Carberry. Trying to keep it in, she just ran out of, just out of bounds along the sideline. The volleyball team also playing today for the for Dartmouth, playing against Oliver Ames. 
Dartmouth with three teams remaining in fall, fall postseason play. The field hockey team, the volleyball team, and the, of course the Dartmouth football team who's playing on Friday against, uh, Thursday against Milton, sorry. The Dartmouth football team and the field hockey team have combined 26-0 so far this season. Hopefully both those teams can keep it going as well as the volleyball team, which is always one of the best here at Dartmouth High. As we saw at halftime, the Dartmouth Hall of Fame committee looking for nominations. They not only nominate players, which we could have a few on the field for Dartmouth eventually, I think five years after you play, you're, you're eligible for induction. Teams also can go in the Hall of Fame. Could see some of these teams playing right now for the Indians in the, in the Hall of Fame one day especially if they continue their postseason runs. Indians with another corner opportunity. Their second of the game. Each team with two corners so far today. Samantha Souza taking it in, hitting it in for the Indians. Haskell with a chance, she winds up, shoots, and we have it in a save. Samantha Souza had a chance in front, but she couldn't quite get the deflection, but another corner for the Indians. Souza, more than likely looking for Haskell here. Nope, goes to Mello. Mello winds up, gets deflected, but Zuber keeps it in. Zuber then follows up her own rebound. Zuber poking it away at it, but Dartmouth scores! And it's 2-0 Indians. Great job, by, great job by Samantha Souza. Scoring on the rebound. Check it out here, Lily Mello. Her shot gets deflected. Zuber does a good job not only taking the shot, but following up her own rebound here on the deflection. She falls it up twice. Three times, and we, we, get our, we get our second goal of the game for the Indians. Souza waiting there, had an empty net. Great job by Zuber. Samantha Souza gets the goal. Zuber gets the assist there. Great job. Second goal of the day for the Indians, first by Sydney Almeida, second by Samantha Souza. Uh, Indians starting to settle in. We see Grace Haskell, the captain, talking. Three captains on the Dartmouth team, Grace Haskell, Callie Rose, and Samantha Souza. So 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. Dartmouth with a 2 nothing lead. Great job by the Indians coming out here in the second half. Getting that quick goal and establishing themselves on the offensive end early on. Two corners there. And here come the Indians. Callie Rose can't hold on to it. As I said earlier, Dartmouth not an easy team to score on. Not, they haven't allowed a, a single goal since October 16th, October 13th, sorry, spanning six and a half games at this point. So the key to beating Dartmouth is playing a low-scoring game. Zareve with a kick save. That's her third save of the game. Lancers keep possession. Emily Brays with the shot blocked by Samantha Souza. Haskell with the steal. She loses it, but she's not giving up on it. 
We'll see Dartmouth Ball in the infraction. Haskell tries to get it downfield. Great block there by Sophia Gordon. Tresco looking for an opening. Dartmouth defense not giving her one. We'll go to Dartmouth. Haskell with a little space. She gets it downfield. But Emily Brace is there. She Good job by Callie Rose. Keeping it in, Aubrey Carberry along the sideline. She has her pocket picked by number 13, Claire Campbell of the Lancers. Molly Henson. William Mello. Great job on defense. Six-seeded Dartmouth Indians. The lone, there's only one other undefeated team in Division Two, right now at Somerset Berkeley. Then they're 17-0 and one. But MIA rankings, not just based on record, they're also based on opponents, strength of schedule. Thus, why Dartmouth is the sixth ranked team despite being the only undefeated team in the, in the division. And Longmeadow, 11th ranked team, despite being just nine, uh, being 9 6 and 5. 9 6 and 3 on the year, sorry. Playing a tough schedule. Mia Santiago runs out of space along the sideline. Just under eight minutes to play here in the third quarter. Dartmouth clears the zone. Pressing forward. Trying to make something happen on the offensive end. Great job by Haskell. Haskell with space. That'll be a Dartmouth ball. Haskell puts the shot into the offensive zone, but Lancer's defense steps up, clears it out. The sun is set here at Memorial Stadium. It's high 50s, not too bad for November 7th, if you can't complain. Lily Mello getting it. Into the offensive zone. Haskell with space. Loses it, but then takes it back and puts the shot. It'll be Lancer's ball on the infraction. Good crowd here at, at Memorial Stadium. Lots of loud parents on both sides cheering these girls on. Zuber, great job, great spin move. Finds Callie Rose. Long Meadow bringing it the other way. Mohika Carpenter. Some nice stick work. Get, get in the middle. Just trying to find a wing, but Zuber's there to block it. Talking to Coach Beth Arguin last week, she said one of the biggest changes, especially for her since she's been here since 1996, is the playing surface. Playing field hockey on this artificial turf has really made the game such a faster pace. 
and really sped up the game and help 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 the girls out a lot, as well as the DGAL program here, which, sh as she said, by the time the girls get to high school, she's not teaching them anymore, uh, teaching them the, the basics anymore. They're pretty polished. And she's just helping further further them along her, their career. Nice job by Lily Mello. She spins around, nice defensive play, clears the zone. Longmeadow looking to get something going offensively. It's been a quiet quarter for them. Longmeadow traveling 88 miles here to Dartmouth. Long ride for them. But they were here plenty early. Shorter day of school, so not too bad. Kelly Rose taking it along the sideline. Kelly, not only their senior captain, she also sings the national anthem for most of the games for the Indians. Did a great job today here at the stadium. Carberry gets downfield to Samantha Souza. Goes off Samantha Souza's stick and out of bounds. It'll be Lancer Ball. Dartmouth has not allowed more than one goal at any point to any opponent this season. Doesn't mean it can't happen today, but it hasn't happened so far this year. Centering pass by Carberry. Samantha Souza looking for room. Grace Haskell. Another one of the Dartmouth captains. Malika Carpenter taking it downfield. Great job by Julia Karen. Stepping in front as Carpenter went to center it. Karen stepped up and blocked it because it would have been a one on one for Longmeadow. They get tangled up with Zuber, hitting it downfield, and now to the long middle ball. Lily Mello along the end line. We have ourselves a corner for the Longmeadow. They're third of the game and first of the second half. Big spot here for Longmeadow, looking to get on the board and establish themselves offensively. Zareev with a save for the Indians. Still in the offensive end. Matreska gets it, centers it. Mohika Carpenter. She was trying to spin around, get a shot off, but Zuber wouldn't let her. Great job by Zuber. Dartmouth trying to get it out of the offensive zone. Mohika Carpenter. Nice job by Lily Mello. Taking it off her stick. Tresca winds up. Unable to get the shot off she was looking for. Susa looking to find Callie Rose along the sideline. They can't connect. So we're under, um, under a minute left in the third quarter. Still 2 0 Dartmouth.
Matreska to Mohika Carpenter. Lily Mello picks her pocket. Nice job by Lily. And she sends it out of the offensive zone. Out of the defensive zone, sorry. Lancers with an opportunity, centering pass. You can sense their frustration offensively. There are many chances, especially in the first quarter, they only had really one here in the second half. And that's the end of the third quarter. Dartmouth extends their lead after the half to two, two to zero. So Dartmouth Indians two, uh, Longmeadow Lancers zero. We'll have the final quarter of action here in two minutes. Dartmouth, here we are at the center of our unique campus. UMass Dartmouth is set on 710 acres on the south coast of Massachusetts between Providence, Rhode Island and Cape Cod, just one hour from Boston, so there's plenty of opportunities for internships and jobs. Plus, we're 15 minutes from the beach. Here at the Campus Center is a great place to meet up with friends between classes and grab a coffee. This building is also home to our Student Activities Involvement and Leadership Office as well as many of our student clubs and organizations. Welcome to The Grove, our new dining facility here on campus where you'll find seating for 800 people and multiple stations for a variety of food options. Plus, there are plenty of seating options to grab a meal or just get comfy, like upstairs around our oversized fireplace or any of the outdoor seating that we have for those nice warm days. Right next door are our new residence halls. These new buildings have space for 1,200 students in single or double rooms. They have state-of-the-art everything including 24-hour security, practice and performance rooms, maker spaces, study rooms, and lounges on every floor, large laundry rooms free to students, community kitchens in each residential building, gender-neutral bathrooms, ADA accessibility, and on-site parking options. A lot of people ask us if housing is guaranteed for all four years, and we're so happy to say yes. Your home away from home awaits. Another great place to take a break from day-to-day -day life is the Fitness Center. They have everything you need to work out and stay fit while on campus. We have a wide variety of equipment and a weekly schedule of classes, all free for students to use. The Trip Athletic Center is home to men and women's Division Three athletic. Welcome back to our final 15 minutes of action of, re of regulation. And we have a 2-0 lead for Dartmouth. The Lancers with... 15 minutes to defend their state title. Dartmouth looking to add to their lead. Samantha Souza with the turnover and she's got a chance. She's smothered by the Lancers defense. Carberry along the end line, great centering pass. She finds Souza and it's going the other direction. Lancers ball. The winner of this game will play the winner of the Somerset, Berkeley, and Olive Rames game, which is also being played today. Somerset, Berkeley, also undefeated on the season. For Dartmouth, if all of all of all of Rames were to win, then it would be a home game. Otherwise, they'll be at Somerset. Longmeadow were to Longmeadow being the eleventh seed. Be on the road either way. So if you're all so if you're the Lancers here, it's full steam ahead off offensively. I mean, even if you leave yourself exposed in the defensive back end, there's no difference between losing 3 nothing 
it, you, you go three to nothing, four to nothing. You're going for the you're going for the lead. So you're going to take more chances defensively and try to bring those defenders up and help the offense. Try to get something going on the offensive end. And we have our first shot, and it's wide. Answers only. T Let's see that play again. Great centering pass, but just wide. Not much the Lancers could do with it. It's been a well-played game for both sides. I think even, even the officials have done a good job of letting both teams play. It's been physical, but not over the top. Two really good programs, Dartmouth and Longmeadow. Been an extremely well played game. Both both teams well coached. Another corner chance here for the Lancers. That's their fifth of the day. Longmeadow looking to get on the scoreboard. Make this a game. Nice pass. Matreska leaves it for Mohika Carpenter. Great job of by Sydney Almeida stepping in front just before Mohika Carpenter could get off a shot. Dartmouth just trying to get it out of this end. Clear it. Haskell backhands it to the sideline. Just trying to get it out of danger. If you're Dartmouth, you're probably playing a little more conservative here on out. Trying to just protect this lead for the next 11 minutes and 20, 11 minutes and 15 seconds. We have another corner, sixth of the day for the Lancers. Just over 11 minutes to play. Two nothing Indians. Matreska back. And the Indians clear it. Carberry along the sideline. Dartmouth looking to get something going on the counter. The hope is for Dartmouth with the Lancers having to bring more people up front. They'll be more exposed in the defensive end. Lily, shot blocked by Matreska. Along the end line, Lancers trying to stuff it, on, stuff it in the middle. We got ourselves another corner. I mean, you, you can feel that Lancers are pressing now to, oh, no, not a corner, but Lancers ball nonetheless. Malika Carpenter. Carberry just trying to get it out. She looks for the sideline, clears it out. Dartmouth in full defensive mode right here. Their whole team down on the defensive end. Centering pass, no one there to, to deflect it in. Indians ball. So if you're Dartmouth, nine minutes to hold on to the hold on to the lead for an opportunity in the lead eight, continuing this undefeated season. Lancers, not going to make it easy. Great job weaving through the defense. Shot is blocked. Feel that sense of urgency. Every ball that goes out of bounds, the Lancers know time is working against them. They're running to it. Another corner.
clock is running, so every every second crucial for the Lancers. And the Lancers working it around, trying to find something. Matreska winds up. Zuber was in the way. Shot is deflected and goes out of bounds. Nice shot by Matreska, but Dartmouth defense staying strong. We have a timeout here on the field. 7.38 to play, both teams. It's the final eight minutes here. Final half of the, of the quarter. Dartmouth holding on to a 2-0 lead. And the Lancers know that clock is working against them, but they're, try, they're trying to poke a hole in it and, and get on the scoreboard. Dartmouth defense has been relentless so far. We'll have... More for you in just a moment, right here from Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Dartmouth 2, Long Meadows. in that timeout coach the different approaches by both of these coaches coach Kelly Gallo in the center of her team's huddle yet get it trying to rally the girls together try to set, get a spark going on the other end coach, coach Beth, Beth Arguin letting her seniors do a lot of the talking in that huddle for the Indians Haskell hits it to the other end of the 50 I mean, if you're Dartmouth at this point, they're going to clear at every at every chance. Anytime you have a chance to clear clear the ball out of danger, you're just going to they're going to be hitting it. No real reason to try to do much offensively at this point. If it's there, you'll take it. But at this point, it's about protecting the lead and using the clock whenever you can. Clock, the friend of Dartmouth right now and the enemy of the, the Long Meadow Lancers. Just over, just under seven minutes left in the game. Dartmouth with a two nothing lead, protecting the two the two goal lead. Zuber, she played a big role in that second goal. But Samantha Souza ended up scoring. Despite being a having a lot of seniors, Dartmouth with talent across the board, Zuber and Almeida also underclassmen for the Indians. So there's still plenty of great players coming back. Those are just a couple. There's plenty of other girls on the roster coming back next year. So the cupboard isn't bare for the for Beth Arguin. Plenty of talent left. Dartmouth keeping it in their own end. Lancers frantically trying to get it back in the offensive zone. Haskell with the steal. She loses the ball, but it's all about. Killing the clock now to Dartmouth. Just 
Just over five minutes to go. It'll be Lancer's ball. As they sprint to get that ball set, and get it going the other direction. Oika Carpenter with the ball, but Zuber there, knock it away. Haskell with the steal. But the Lancers keep possession. Four thirty to go for the Indians. They're bringing everyone back. Everyone back on defense. Tresca trying to get that ball in as soon as she can. Just under four minutes to go in the game. Samantha Souza loses possession along the sideline. It's going the other way. Just over the sick of Carberry. Kayla McGee is there. She tries to turn it over, turn it over, but she goes out of bounds. Matreska trying to center it. Carberry, great job getting in the way. Three twenty-four to go. Dartmouth defense relentless. When you haven't given up two goals in any game all season, you have three fourteen to play. You can kind of see why Dartmouth has had the success they have. There's, if you're going to score a goal, you're going to have to earn it against them. They don't allow anything cheap. They make you work for everything. Dartmouth can feel it. You can feel it on the bench. They know it's getting closer. We're under three minutes to play. They got the 2-0 two, two lead, fourth quarter. Every clear out here, taking away costly seconds for the Lancers. Matreska centers it to Mohika Carpenter. Good spin but Zuber not giving up on the play. You can see Dartmouth team hasn't let up a second. Especially on the defensive end, there's been no let up at all. Yeah, another clear out and we're under two minutes to go here at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Dartmouth trying to punch a ticket in the elite to the elite eight and we have a Breakaway opportunity, two on one for the Indians. Sydney Almeida loses the ball, but we got the push, push, no push called. Ref letting them, letting them play. One thirty to go, ninety seconds left. Callie Rose with a chance, and the Lancers clear it out. Not ideal for the Lancers right there. Clear out, Dartmouth no rush to get that ball back into play. As they should be. Just over a minute. Haskell loses it. Samantha Souza with a shot on net. Dartmouth with the corner. 45 seconds left. And the final score, the, the victor is all, all but inevitable at this point. Indians with a two goal lead and 30 seconds to play. Likely heading to the Elite Eight. Win number 19 for the Indians. Yet their amazing run continues. 20 seconds to go. No rush for the Indians. They're passing it along. 
they can feel it. You can see they're excited. They, they've got, the other, got another corner, and that'll probably do it here. Dartmouth with their fifth corner. And time is up, and the Indians advance. They rush the field. Great win for Dartmouth. They, they take out the defending state champion, Longmeadow Lancers. And they're headed to the Elite Eight as they jump on the field. A lot to be proud of for, for the Dartmouth Indians as their magical run continues. They are now 19-0 on the season. And they're on to the Elite Eight. Incre great job by them today. No, they never gave up. Kept the, it probably wasn't their best, best game, but another well-rounded performance is... That's what great teams do. Even if they're not if they're not at their best offensively, then they step it up on defense. So we're all we're done here from Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. I'm Chad Amaral. Dartmouth advances to the Elite Eight with a two-nothing win over Longmeadow. Thank you, everybody.